Hello. It's Yoga Sutras time. Here we are. Is anybody there with me? No, not yet. Nobody's there with me. There's a Rojo here with me. I'm saying somebody will see it. Now there's two, two people there, but I don't know who yet because nobody has said hello. I got my mouse finger ready. As soon as you type in hi, I will post it up there. And there I am. There's my name. In case you don't know. Hello, Roseanne. Hello, Nilesh. There we go. And I have a Rojo here. Hello. Rojo said hello. There is... Rojo is here. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Scott. And alrighty, we are going through our next block of sutras. I forgot to pull up the, uh, wait a minute, where, where do I have it here? Uh, wait a minute. I agree comment. I keep clicking these. And Roseanne says, hello, Rojo. And Terry, a.k.a. Violet, says, hello. Hi, B. And let's see. Huh. I lost a thing here. Let me get pick this up here. There we go. Here we are. That's what I wanted to show. I don't know which one I've got showing. Oops. There we go. Anyway, uh, do I have it up there? Yes, I have it up there. And there we are. And just to put it in perspective here, I, I, here is where we are. Obstacles and solutions. I don't know which page I have. I have up the JPEG. And so it's, and, and it will not allow me to capture on it. I have the PDF up, but I didn't get it anyway. We're here on Obstacles and Solutions, Sutra 30 to 32. And I will take them down to, hi, Raj. There's Raj. Hello, Raj. And I'll take that out, and I'll put this in, and there we go. There is the, let me put that there, and I think I finally got it. Let me slide this. I'm sliding stuff around on my desktop. I kind of have a mess here. Obstacles are to be expected. And note here on our little picture to the side, the, the, the mind can remember this nicely. So if you think, where was that part in the Yoga Sutras that had to do with obstacles? And hopefully the graphics see there's one, two, three, four chapters in the Yoga Sutras in the little blue mark. 
is a little more than halfway halfway through the first chapter. <laughs> there are a number of predictable obstacles that arise on the inner journey, along with several consequences that grow out of them. While these can be a challenge, there is a certain comfort in knowing that they can be a natural, predictable part of the process. Knowing this can help to maintain the faith and conviction that was previously discussed as essential in Sutra 20 earlier. Let's click there briefly just to jog the memory. There is Shraddha, Virya, energy, faith, energy, smriti, mindfulness, memory, memory of samadhi, commitment to samadhi, and the seeking of higher wisdom. And there we go. So because of that, and here are the predictable obstacles. <laughs> We're going to run into the sutra a moment when I scroll down, but here's the short version of that. And I've often, in going through this with people, had people look at this and say, wow, that describes my whole life. I know every one of those. And those are outlined in Sutra 30. And then, hello, Matesh. And for most of us, as if that's not enough, insult on injury, those nine obstacles lead to four other companions. These are mental and physical pain, sadness and frustration. How many times have I been told I, I, I have a bad life, I'm depressed? Of course. And it screws up our breathing. We have a regular breath. And the body becomes unsteady and feeling ill. And so... I call these, there's nine of these and there's four of these. So I sometimes playfully call these the 13 yucky things. But the good news is there is a single underlying principle that is the antidote for these obstacles and consequence. And that is one pointedness of mind. There are many, many ways in which we cultivate one pointedness. It does not just mean like taking a pill. I'm having these 13 yucky things come. And so now I'm going to take a pill and force myself to be, you know, one pointed on something. But it, it, it's the principle of one pointedness. It may be remembering OM. It may be breath awareness. It may be right in the middle of life when you're working on a project and, and things are going crazy around you and you say, I'm just going to stay focused on the work at hand or something like that. Repeatedly remember one aspect of truth or one object. It may be any object, including one of several that are suggested in the coming sutras. So in the block of sutras that are to come, there are, what's that, seven sutras that Patanjali outlines as ways to steady and stabilize the mind, and they all involve this one-pointedness. So again, we know, hello, Gurvinder. Again, we notice that there is a method to the madness of the Yoga Sutras. There is something systematic about it. And this is a good example of that. And note that when Patanjali talks about these methods of stabilizing and clearing the mind and doing the one-pointedness, one of the favorites in there, is, it talks about four attitudes, five suggestions, and Sutra 39 says, lastly, the one-pointedness can be done on whatever you find pleasing and useful. So, you know, Raj just sent me my message a little while ago, uh, a, a, a recorded DV, uh, not a recorded uh, YouTube video of Yanni playing music. Well, I know that Raj loves Yanni. I like Yanni too. I'm not quite up to the Raj level. But if Raj has a really crappy day and it just feels like everything's going wrong and he goes home and turns on some Yanni music and starts practicing playing his own piano, his own electronic piano that he has there, that's a form of one pointedness. So it's a perfect solution for Raj. One is to turn on the stereo and listen to Yanni play music and the other is to turn on alternatively, or both turn on his own electronic 
keyboard thing and sits there and starts practicing the Yanni music. Thank you, Rods, for letting me use you as an example. Take the, yeah, look at that. Terry says, take that, you 13 yuckies. Now, if we have yuckies going on and they really are related to things that we need to deal with, if Raj really has some problems going on and he needs to solve the problems, listening to Yanni music or, or just sitting there and only playing his own keyboard and his favorite music, that alone is not going to solve the problems. But it's a very, very, this is the principle. It's a very, very useful principle for how to deal with those 13 yucky things. Take that, you 13 yuckies, says Teria. And so this is the principle that Patanjali is telling us here. It's one-pointedness of mind. And, and again, thank you, Raj, for letting me use you as an example. So it's a perfect example. And we each have things in our lives. You know, life around here never gets terribly, terribly outrageously crazy around here. But sometimes when Ma Tree and I are sitting here, like when it's time that we're working on courses and we're and she's doing a lot of editing work and 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 I'm doing satsangs and we're doing recording and we're doing all this stuff and we just feel busy, busy, busy. Some days we just run away and go to a movie. And uh, uh, you know we have our taste in movies is approximately similar. So uh, we'll pick a movie and we'll just, there's a movie theater across the street. It's about a 10 minute walk away from here to the, to the theater. And so it's a one pointed thing that if we pick a good movie, it's not, it's not bad. It's not, it's not destructive to the mind and it's a form of one pointed entertainment. And, and so there are many, many ways that we can do one pointedness. Obviously, we can go sit for meditation. We can go lay down. We can take the Yoga Nidra recording and play that or, or you know, or many, many things that we can come up with. If anybody has some other ideas of what you do, type it in the box. Of course, one pointedness with mantra and the attitudes that uh, P Patanjali outlines and these other five suggestions, breath awareness, sensation, luminosity, contemplation on a stable mind, focus on the stream of the mind. These are internal things, and they are very useful and important. But I was letting my attention fall on the one that I like that says, or whatever you find pleasing. Okay. I need to go back to the sutra, back. There we are. Although there are many forms in which this can be practiced, the principle is uniform. If the mind is focused, then it is far less likely to get entangled and lost in the mire of delusion that can come from these obstacles. We all know this. I think that when the mind starts to get into this mode, it feels dull, doubts come, instability comes, illness comes, laziness comes, just don't want to do anything, and then there's pain, the sadness comes. Isn't it true that it just seems like, wait a minute, when one part of this thing comes, it just comes in a flood. Is that right, Rojo? Rojo? Huh? Are you still with me? I lost Rojo. She's being one-pointed on sleep. Mm. Repeatedly remember one aspect of truth or one object. Maybe related to religion, an aspect of your own being, a principle, or some other pleasing ob ob object. It may be a mantra, a short prayer, or affirmation. While, while there is great breadth of choice in objects, a sincere aspirant will choose wisely the object of this practice, possibly along the guidance of someone familiar with these practices. A picture is worth a thousand. This link leads to a page. I'm not sure if this is going to work on this video. I'll put it up and we'll take a look. It's a picture of 13, 18, I'm sorry, 18 circular objects which appear to be moving. 
although are, all they are not. By focusing your eyes on the small black center of any of the circles, they all stop. This illusion is a simple way to communicate the principle of using one-pointedness to still the mind. Gazing at this picture is not literally being suggested as a meditation practice. Okay, here it is. Now, I don't know if this is going to work online showing this in this way, but we will do it here, and I will slide this over here and try to get it kind of in the middle a little bit, so as best we can. If you look around out here just in the open field between those black dots, I'm going to come over here and fill the screen with this and take me out. <clears throat> So if you would, please, as best you can see that, uh, I'll come back to your comment in a mo moment, Raj. Uh, if you would, just allow yourself to sit there and gaze at your computer and notice the fact that if you look between those things out in the field where those, those little yellow oblongs and just allow your mind to wander in there, it's a little trick of the brain, however that happens. It seems like the whole field is moving around a little bit, vibrating or or, liter or spinning maybe, vibrating or spinning. And then if once you get that to happen, then bring your attention to one of the little black dots and notice what happens. Everything stops spinning. Did that happen for anybody? Can you see that? I should take your 13 yucky comment out too? Why would I take it out? I like the comment. I, I like that comment. Uh, maybe I'm not understanding. You should take my 13 yucky comment out too. I like the comment. Take that, you 13 yucky things. Yeah, thank you, Raj. Yes, it did stop. Isn't that a fascinating thing? Scott says, yes, exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot to take it out. Duh. Thank you. Thank you. There, that catches it. Now it's a better view. And so now I just, because I was looking at the real thing here, so I did not see, I, I forgot that it was transmitting the comment. So I'll just leave it there for a minute. We can all play with it. But isn't that fascinating? And and I like the picture. And And I'm just saying that I just, Quite by accident, some years ago, I discovered when I was uh, writing this, making the website, I discovered this somewhere online, this picture, and I thought, wow, this is kind of an example of how that works. The mind wanders all over, and if I simply focus on one of the dots, everything stops moving. This picture, if you like this picture, it's on my swamij.com website, if, and you can find it. Well, here it is, it, it, and you can find it by going to where we just are in these sutras. That's where I just clicked on I'm going to click back now. I think everybody's probably seen enough of these. Okay. Here's another thing that's purple dots. I'm going to click on the purple dots. This is a fascinating illusion, too. Now, if you just gaze at this thing, probably what you notice is that it appears that the, that the purple dots, something is spinning around the circle. To my eye, the, 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 the pink or purple dot is going clockwise around in a circle. But then if you gaze right at the little cross right in the middle, you'll see that it changes. The purple dots stop spinning around, and what you see is a green dot, one green dot moving around in a circle. And the purple dots 
start to disappear and turn into a field of just gray. And then the only thing that is there is a green dot spinning around. And then you come off of the cross and back out somewhere into the gray field. And what reappears then is all those purple dots. Is anybody seeing that? My brain started oozing out of my ears. Tee -hee -hee. Yeah, I do like the comment, uh, uh, Terry. Regardless of point of focus, yeah, regardless of where the point is, everything, it, when we just wander around in there, it just keeps moving. And when you focus on any point, then the thing starts to change. But it's got that little, nice little cross mark in the middle, so it helps. Let's see what else we got here. Trotica gazing. Here's Trotica gazing, which I made this. Now, this is a fascinating experiment. It's called Trotica is gazing. And I don't have this on here right now. There is a... Uh, coding back here that if on the Mac this seems to not work there's a sound file in the background I'm going to come back and do this other one here's Trotica with Soham Mantra now on the Mac here what I'm using right now the uh, the Soham is not playing if you do not hear sound click here yeah, it gives you the sound. You, I don't, I don't know if you guys can hear it. You'll have to hear it as an echo. <laughs> but if you have, if you're using a PC with a different, I don't know what browsers it works on. I put this thing up years ago, and somewhere on the. Uh, YouTube channel, I have this on the YouTube channel, so the sound is automatically there. And so there's a so hum going in the background. Anyway, it's just a nice little image to practice trotica, gazing. And it's a form of one-pointedness. Okay, let's see what I've got here. Uh, Raj had something down here. Raj said, I wanted to ask, Oops, I wanted to ask about someone who had clinical depression. A friend of mine could start with something like music or other activity with one-pointedness as a starting point to stabilize the mind and then gradually bring the mind from muda to vikshipta, which is a better starting point for the path of the inner journey. Exactly right, Raj. I think a lot of these practices could be used clinically with people and would help people cope with whatever's going on. I'm not going to go out there and try to compete with psychiatrists and psychologists to tell them just do yoga as a, as a treatment for clinical depression. However, I have met a handful of clinical psychologists over the years that very, very much use these principles and, and, have, and have great success with people being helped. So the, to my thinking, the people who should be guiding their clients or patients in that is the professional himself. I don't want to go in there and try to compete with the psychiatrist and, get, and, and, and be the teacher of their patients. Besides which, but then when it gets hard, they come after me because it's my fault. But the principle that you're asking about, Raj, is, is absolutely, I think, right on track. And so if it's a friend of yours that is having that, you know, I know you well, and I know what you're talking about is pointing out to him simply that gentle one-pointedness of mind will, will help him feel better. And particularly if he runs the experiments and discovers that, wow, my friend Raj knows something here. And this thing that he's telling me about this meditation stuff, there's something to it. <clears throat> yeah, on track, I think, yeah. Let's see what else we got going on there. I'm scrolling up at the comments here. I still like Bajani's brain oozing. 
Yes, cool, says Roseanne. <laughs> That's funny. Johnny, is that really a new thing that your brain is losing? Optical avidya. Yes, optical avidya. I never thought of it but with that word, but that's what it is, optical avidya. But it allows us to, to do something that shows us a pretty clear example. I hear so hum, but that you mean internally. You're not hearing it transmit, are you? Are you telling me that you literally could hear it when I played it? Somebody answered that. Did you hear the so hum when I put this on? I do not hear it. Maybe I have this thing muted. I don't hear this. Are, are you telling me that you're internally doing so hum yourself or that you literally can hear this transmitting? Okay, bye-bye, Terry. Yeah. All righty, I'm going to click this back here and take a look at where we are. And so here's the sutra itself, the, the sutra, and it lists these things. There's the, the thing in the translations, what do you call vyadi? Well, it's disease, illness, sickness, mental laziness, inefficiency, idleness, procrastination, dullness, and when I, when I put together this Yoga Sutras on the morning here, I, I had a bunch of, re, of Yoga Sutras commentaries that I have respect for, and I sort of picked a variety of words. I figured I'm going to put more words. Instead of saying, what is the one perfect word for Stiana, I'm going to put a few words. And so when you see that, it gives you a feel for what is intended by Patanjali. It's part mental laziness, part inefficiency, part idleness, part procrastination, part dullness. And when I made that list at the top, I put I put dullness. So is it indecision or is it doubt? Well, it's somewhere in that area. Anyway, these are the actual Sanskrit words that goes with it. And in te, these are the antaraya, the obstacles. And to me, there is great comfort in knowing that these are predictable because here it is, Patanjali put this down for us a couple thousand years ago that says this is human nature. This is the nature of our human mind, that we simply, these things naturally occur. And this comes from the avidya. These two principles Chitta Vikshepa and Antaraya are not just lumped together as one concept. They are distractions and they are obstacles. These distractions are obstacles. They are separate, they'll work together. Seeing these two as separate reveals a big key to yoga. First, one sees the nine states of mind and impressions arise and attentions engages with them. They First, they literally distract the attention from whatever else was focused on at the time. The distraction comes first. The vikshepa comes first. And then they become obstacles. It's a subtle point, but it's useful when you're trying to observe this internally and how this process works because you realize, wow, I'm feeling, I'm feeling crappy, something's going on here. And then you think back, the yogi and you thinks back and say, well, wait a minute, everything was going great this morning, and then somewhere during the day things shifted, and all of a sudden I'm having a terrible day. And the yogi and you can bring it back to, oh, this is when I lost control of my mind and I fell into the trap. Distraction and disturbance are two different principles. Know that they're, notice that their first must be distraction and that this is followed by disturbance. The reason, the significance of that is how to break the link between the distraction and the subsequent pain as an obstacle is the key to freedom. 
So the key is don't get distracted in the first place. If we get distracted from our equanimity, that's the beginning of the trouble. And then the klesha kicks in, kicks in and the and the ragas and the devashas, the attractions and aversion, and we're hooked into it. And then we've got that storm of the 13 yucky things. How to break the link between the distraction and subsequent pain is the key to freedom. Now, I did not put the link here, but recall that in chapter two, where Patanjali introduces the word viveka, discernment, it is to break the link with the karmashaya. It is to break the link with the samskaras. This is what we're doing here. It's the same principle. It's just here is being presented as the preliminary. This is the foundation. And then later on, we see that, wow, this foundation experience of distraction, then disturbance, keeps having over and over and over, and it's related back to my samskaras. Let's see if anybody's got anything. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm not am I missing anything. Hello, Jeff. You could hear it when I clicked on the audio. Wow, isn't that funny? I, that seems odd to me. I cannot hear it here, but yet when I clicked on it, you could hear it. You could hear the so hum. That's fascinating. It's a technical mystery. Huh. The, the means of doing this, breaking this link, is through the one-pointedness, just like the little game we just played with those visual objects, the, the visual avidya, I think Johnny called them. In turn, in turn, then the obstacle does not surface. It is an amazingly simple principle. So simple, in fact, that it is very difficult to entice others to believe it and to practice it. Now, this is me speaking this. This is writing this here. And I, this is just a, an observation that I have made over years of a trying to communicate this stuff with people. And it's one of the reasons that I kind of finally conclude that I'm just either incompetent or, or it just can't be done. I just don't know how to teach anybody, force anybody to do this simple principle. I attempt, so we have those little things like we just did to demonstrate one-pointedness. But I have experimented this uh, with this a lot many years ago to discover that, wow, this is really, really true. What Patanjali put here is not just one little verse to be memorized, to pass on the exam. Oh, one point, and this is the antidote. People who are suffering, as Rod mentioned, as Raj mentioned, his friend from depressions. A person will say, I am depressed. I, I, have, I have an email series of email exchanges been going on for several days now from a fellow who I don't know, he just showed up on my on, in my world recently, sent, asked to join the Ashram Satsang group to friend me and all this, and then sends me a message that says, I am confused and I don't know what to do. And I don't know how to communicate this principle to him. I, I And I've watched this for years. A person will say, over and over will say, quote, I am confused, or will say, quote, I am depressed, over and over and over, all day long. If you keep saying, I am depressed, I am depressed, I am depressed, what are you going to be? From time to time, I've had a person do that with me, and I'll say, can you, can you pause on that for a moment and say, in your deepest philosophy, what would you say that you are at the depth of your being? Would you say, I am God, I am truth, I am light, I am divine? Pick a word. What would you say I am? And so somebody will say, well, I suppose I'm the light of God. I said, are you willing to run an experiment and report back to me tomorrow? Somewhere in the next 24 hours, I want to ask you to say, I am the divine light 1,000 times. Are you willing to run the experiment? And I've had people say back to me, no, I can't because I'm depressed. 
will you please say, I am divine light, a hundred times. Any time during the next day, will you say that? No, I'm depressed. I know this because I've run into it. One of the validations I got out of this is one of Swami Rama's video lectures that you can watch that we have on the YouTube channel. One of them, I can't tell you which one to go to. He tells the story of a woman in Kanpur, India, who was very, very troubled, and she was in pain. She was very ill. I don't remember. Maybe she was dying. But he said he wanted to, he wanted her to repeat the mantra, Ram, Ram, Ram. And she kept saying, no, 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 you don't understand. Swamiji, I'm suffering. I cannot do that. And so the mouth is operating. The words are coming out over and over and over again. And all the request is, is change the words. Ram, Ram, Ram. Or I am divine light. Or, you know, whatever the words is, that's the principle of one pointedness. And it's just absolutely amazing. There is a core simplicity to this process. I guess I'm harping on this. I'm going into one of my little rants over it. Just in case you have accidentally overlooked this simple principle. And and because it's so easy for all of us to get into silly, silly mind habits that are some composite of these 13 yucky things. And this antidote is absolutely effective and is very, very simple. Simple, but not easy. And so this is what happens. So far at this level of practice, we are cultivating vairagya by not getting distracted in the first place. And then when we have stabilized the mind, we can introspect because now we have vairagya, question mark. Yes, that's right on track. Yes, we, we have cultivated some degree of vairagya because we have, as you said, because we have the one point of this in mind, we don't, we, it is not necessary out of habit to get distracted and sucked into it. And then we are able to witness it internally and do the introspection. And then we can actually attenuate it further. Recall that in early chapter two, Patanjali talks about the, the stages of, of, of activity of a klesha, of a klesha vritti. And it's either active or we've or we've gotten a break from it. This is what's being described here in this sutra is getting a break from. It. And then comes attenuation of the klesha. One thing, unfortunately, that often gets skipped is we, we do something to learn how to break our attention from what's bothering us. Here's an example. You have a crappy day. Things are going all wrong. And what do you do? You come home to the house. You turn on the television set and you watch stupid, stupid things on television and open a can of beer and eat junk food. Many, 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 many people do this. And it kind of works. We all know this. It kind of works a little bit. We get a little bit of distraction from the problems of the day, but we're eating crap food and watching stupid stuff on the television, and then in the morning we have a hangover. <coughs> yeah, I think you're right, Johnny. I think social norms tend to cause us to feel more pain than what is actually there sometimes. Yeah, but still we do feel the pain. I think you I think my inclination is to agree with you that there's that we we can allow ourselves to get caught up in the social norms. But let's be yogis. Now, we in this conversation, we all kind of know this. Let's be yogis and let's not get caught in the social norms. And, and this is one of the things that people who are trying to break addictive behaviors, one of the things that they commonly need to do is do different things with their social time, hang out with different people in different places. I've met many, many people that say, I have, yeah, okay, I admit I have an alcohol problem. And so now I'm going to go to the bar and I'm going to drink Coca-Cola. My friends are going to get drunk and all this, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go drink Coca-Cola. And the social norms have not changed. And before you know it, caught back into the same silliness. I don't know if that's a perfect example. It doesn't have to be 
of behavior such as drinking or eating food, but the process continues. If we're caught in the depression feeling and we can break away from it a little bit, that's the start. But then go look at Patanjali. When we get there, we'll get there in a few more sessions. It'll be coming because we're soon going to move into Chapter 2 of the Yoga Sutras. And remember, we will encounter that section there in that sutra where Patanjali talks about the attenuation. I do not have it linked right here, I don't think. I don't see it linked. So there's the one-pointedness. Huh. And this is preparation. One-pointedness applies to all levels. So even, even when we're at the gross level of thinking or we get subtler and subtler and subtler, and we're actually meditating on the samskaras at the deepest level of meditation, where we're applying samyama, dhanana, dhyana, and samadhi, when we're applying samyama to the subtlest aspects of our, of our samskaras, the same principle of one-pointedness holds true. It's just one is at the gross and the other is subtler. And here I just put this here as a reminder. This is always a balancing act between never give up and always let go. Practice and vairagya, abhyasa and vairagya. Abhyasa cultivating the strong conviction, persistent effort to constantly choose practices with action, speech, and thought that lead and direct direction of stable tranquility stitta. Vairagya is learning to actively, systematically encounter, explore, and let go of the many attachments, blah, blah, blah. They work together. Not new information. Okay? I think everybody's got that. Is that okay? I think we got it figured out. This is the core principle of this section. There are obstacles. There are 13 yucky things. And the key antidote that we keep learning more and more the meaning of it and how to do it. Yeah, but there's a principle here. So welcome, Roz. Yeah, you can catch it later. The the core principle, I and I know you know, you'll be you'll you'll find it familiar. So a, a meeting, uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Alrighty, so if it's okay, we'll pause here. Social norms are, are our collective habit patterns, clashes. So we all have some, some clashes in common, it seems, but my clashes are my clashes and your clashes are your clashes. So you can't help mine and I can't help yours. When we were talking about addictive behavior, this, you know, in a lot of the recovery communities, one of the principles is you share your own life with other people and it helps them theoretically. But but everybody involved in, in recovery communities knows you cannot do it for the other people. Everybody knows this. Everybody has to do their own thing. It's nice to know other people who have been been through this stuff. That's what satsang is about. Whether you call it satsang, or a recovery community of friends hanging out together, sharing with one another. There's a principle there that being with other people, what we know as satsang, is extremely, extremely useful. Whoops, I have this thing. I have me covered up all that time, and you've missed my charming, smiling face. So there we go. All righty, so... Let's pause here, and, and next time, what will we do next time? The next section is Sutra 33 to 39, and these are Patanjali's suggestions about how to stabilize and clear the mind. It follows quite naturally after what we were just looking at, which is about one-pointedness, as the antidote for the nine obstacles and the four consequences, which are what, well, as you know, I said, I playfully call the 13 yucky things. And so this we will do next time, which I guess comes on Saturday. So we're just moving through this. And remember, as usual, if afterwards on this thing, uh, if you have anything you'd like me to comment further on, 
or or whatever, put to just type in the comment or send me a private message and I'll say some more about whatever it happens to be that you're wondering about. Either here in the satsang group or if you want to come over into the table talk group and and have some dialogue about any of these sections of the Yoga Sutras, come over there and join in and tell me and I'll respond to it. And if you want to if you want to learn how to be on here together with me to do a satsang like this, I'll help you do that. Raj has done it with me. Matri and I do it a lot because she's very accustomed to it. Philip and I are doing a thing going through uh, the uh, conscious love and family life. Yeah, enjoy, Raj. Enjoy going through this. Groovy feeling, groovy. Do 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 do. Roz has you may have seen has been digging up old pictures that she took around. I think it was in 1996. She has a couple of young pictures of yours truly in India. Anyway, so that's kind of fun. All righty. So see you, everybody. And remember, have a nice meditation. And what we're looking for is to be found there in the silence that is where after the om. And this is om. This is om. But if you take this om and you lay it down on its side and put it here, this is om. And this here, I have a stick here somewhere. This question mark here is the picture showing up. Oops, I'm going to take, sorry, Roz, I'm going to take you out. The question mark that is here is the same as the dot that is here. So if you take the ohm and you rotate it 90 degrees and you lay it down and you slightly rewrite the picture, this is the ohm. So this is Vaishnar is the lowest loop. This chunk in the middle is Tejas of the active unconscious. That's this piece here. This is the latent unconscious, the place of samskaras. This plane of reality is called prajna. That relates to this. And between there and the question mark is this, which is, so to speak, maya or illusion or adi prana, the first prana coming outward. But in any case, what you and I are looking for I'm not trying to start over again here, but is that what we are looking for is what? The silence that is after the Om. That's where we find that's, that's what it's all about. Song. So anyway, thank you for playing. Have a wonderful meditation, okay? Talk to you. I guess next time I'm on here with you is Friday unless somebody posts something here or in the table talk and we put another thing out there. So to be continued, thanks for playing. Roz says yes, but I don't remember what the yes was about. I didn't catch it in time, so I didn't catch what the yes was about. Maybe it was about the the old pictures or something. The silence after the home. Let's let that. Yeah, the silence, let, let's let the silence after the OM be the last word. How's that? Okay, and I'll put that back there so I can wave. Okay, bye-bye all.